ready. I was born ready. Okay. Roll. Barren you. I'm so expired. I'm going to go and start a paper route right now. That guess my goat be true. Is that Pee-wee's Big Adventure? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, this is Rish Outfield. And Big Anklevich. Welcome to another episode of That Gets My Goat. Usually when we record these things, we're pressed for time lately. But I found that that probably helps us, because every time I start talking about what I'm talking about right now, you usually say, hey, i, I got to go. i gotta, gotta be up in three hours. or <laughs> what, Fill in the blank. And so uh, we will try and stay on topic on this. And what what is the topic today, sir? Today we went and saw... X-Men, is it just X-Men Apocalypse? Is that what it was called? It was called X-Men Apocalypse. Okay. What did you think it was called? X-Men I don't know. There 7 been, colon Apocalypse? Or? There could have been like X-Men Rise of Apocalypse. Oh, or X-Men Age of Apocalypse. Okay, Age for a of while Apocalypse. There, I thought it was called Age of Apocalypse because there was a whole series that went for a full year in Marvel Comics that was called Age of Apocalypse. But I was confusing Age of Ultron and X-Men Apocalypse. Well, they did Age of a few things. It's one of those things that seems to happen in movies these days. You have a bunch of movies that arise of this, and then that plays out, I guess, and then they start Age of This. And so we've had a bunch of those. There was an Age of Extinction. Uh-huh. And there was uh, a couple others. Age of Ultron. Age of the Planet of the Apes. Okay, maybe not. No, that was Rise. Ah. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, all right. It was part of the Rise of the Lycans and Rise of... Wasn't there a Rise of Cobra? I think so, yeah. Wasn't there Rise of the Fallen? Wait, no. Sorry, that was a different... That, that wouldn't work, would it? Rise of the Fallen. It was sure, something the, of the, the Fallen. The Dark Knight though. Rises? The, yeah, Dark Knight Rises was another one. The Transformers Revenge something of the... Of the Fallen. Revenge of the Fallen. There we go. Yeah, Rise of the Fallen would be kind of... No, Silly. That, that's fine. Rise of the Fallen. Somebody, it's like... somebody gets up again after they've fallen. <laughs> right, wait, Rise of a Sidekick. Oh, okay. Yeah, Age of a Sidekick. Age of... Yes. <laughs> age is 12. He's 12. The Age of the Sidekick. Yeah, well, I think he's 11. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. So, did you drag me to this? Or is that fair to say? Well, you... I, I wasn't kicking and screaming, but I didn't want to see it. Not today you didn't kick and scream, but you kicked a little bit and screamed a, a tad. Last time I talked to you, Just I was like, yeah, we're going to go to X-Men. And you're like, no, I don't want to see that. I'm not going to see that. I don't care what you say. Is that your impression of me? Is that how I sound to your ears? Exactly. Holy smoke. Why? <laughs> and I have a podcast? <laughs> It's hard to believe, isn't it? Ooh. Yeah. And then you went like this. It's a podcast. Tell them you, what you I You punched your fist on the table and said, no, not going. And I wasn't sure why, because, like, we went to the last one. Yeah, the last one was Civil War, dude. No, the last X-Men movie. Oh, okay. We went, to, well, we, I mean, we went to Deadpool, too. Which you also kicked and stamped your foot and said you didn't want to see. You got a thing against X-Men now? Is that what it is? I, I hope that you have a bunch of kids and that one day all your kids become teenagers so you can find out what kicking and stamping <laughs> of feet really is. That would be weird to have a bunch of teenagers in the house. Ugh. I don't know how I would deal with that. No, I didn't want to see it. Uh, it just, I don't know. At some point, the series lost me even though i i liked days of future past but yeah. i never felt the need to see it again i never saw it since the day we recorded it which i believe was two years today and uh and it, which is weird because it doesn't seem like it's been two years it seems like it's been four months maybe at the longest since that movie came out but you know in the days leading up to this I started, I, I felt like it was tired, or the designs were uninspired, or one more thing that rhymes. Wired? Something about being wired? Yeah, I, I hadn't but gotten you didn't like fired. The, you didn't up. like the okay. actors that they'd hired. That's right. You didn't like the Jean Grey. You weren't, you weren't excited about Jean Grey, Gosh, right? I wasn't, no. But all of the stuff, the, the, the new stuff, just... And, and maybe it's too early to start talking about this, but I thought the movie was really, really ugly. Did you think that? I mean, it's like the 
from the beginning with you know the extended special effects sequence set in ancient days i was just like whoa this is so gross and whoever the production designer was you know is one of those guys that you know that thought hr giger didn't go grim enough and i just yeah I, I, I but at the same time i talked to you before the movie started i was worried that because i didn't want to see it th- that i didn't want to like it and that you know that's not the right mindset to have with your mind closed of course you're not going to like it right well i mean that's possible sometimes if you go there with low expectations then you're more likely to like it because as long as it at least meets those low expectations you're like eh, that was as good as i thought it would be or it's comes in above those low expectations you're like wow that was better than i thought it was going to be though i'm trying to remember days of future past it seems like when that came out i i didn't yeah it's not that i didn't want to see it but i didn't think it would be very good and i quite liked that movie but maybe just in the the two years since i have soured or i i don't know yeah, and the thing with Deadpool was the the and and forgive me if you're one of those, but you wouldn't be listening to my podcast if you were one of those. But the wrong sorts of people were really excited about Deadpool. The people that go fuck yeah were excited about Deadpool, and I don't want to go to a movie with people like that. Cuz they're just going to watch it on their phone anyway. <laughs> And so, yeah, the I, two or three people I knew went were super excited about Deadpool, and you said, "Are they gonna? Are you gonna watch this?" And they said, "Oh, I, I said, or they said?" No, you said, "Are you gonna watch this?" And they said, "I don't, I don't understand." I, I, I thought you were wanting to be, you just say, "Hell no!" You're supposed angry. to say, F- "Yeah." Oh, okay. Sorry, you wanted me to say that, and and yeah, they were just super excited. And it was opening on Valentine's Day, and they're like, "Yeah." And I was like, that's the day that you're supposed to... If you have someone in your life, you're supposed to be with them. And I was like... And and they farted, which was really weird that just everybody happened to fart when I mentioned that. You know, Deadpool came out, and I know you wanted to see it, and I heard really good things. And so we went, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. And did we not talk about it on the show? I'm sure we did. Yeah, we did. I forced, I, I, I basically peer pressured you into seeing it. I asked the fans of oh, the that's show right. if they wanted to hear an episode about Deadpool. And they all said, Rish, you suck if you don't see it. I hate you. I'm rage quitting the show. No, they didn't say see, any of that again, stuff. People that say that, <laughs> I don't want you to listen to the show. They didn't say any of that Guys. stuff. But they did say, come on, Rish, you can do it. Well, okay, I hear you, and and I am susceptible to peer pressure as well. And if the fans really, really want us to see something, as long as it's not got Dawn of Justice in the title, I'm willing (laughs) to consider it. I mean, but you never asked the fans if we should go see X Men, or if you did, that episode hasn't aired. No, I Um, didn't ask the fans. I just figured I was going to force you to do it this time. I wanted to see the show. I like the X Men. The X Men franchise is what got me into comic books in the first place all the way back in i was gonna say oh you didn't see it 2000 but it was actually 2002 when the second one came out i don't think so i I, spider-man came out in 2002 it it might maybe it was 2003 because i didn't see spider-man when it came out either um i did see revenge of the attack of the Rise of the Clones, that's what it was. Da- age, Dawn age of, of the, the Age of the Clones. Dawn. Rise of dawn the Dawn of, of the Age the of the age. Clones. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, that's I didn't funny. see Spider-Man. X-Men 2 was probably the first comic book movie that I went and saw. And I absolutely loved it. I went and got the first. I actually went and bought the first movie shortly thereafter and I watched that I went and to the library and started getting graphic novels of the X-Men I had a friend at work who was into comic books and he started telling me about all the different stuff 
you know, the X-Men history, the all the different things that have been going on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And from that, I grew into a fan of comic books and comic book related stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, I have a uh, bit of a soft spot for the X-Men, I guess. And Deadpool, I don't know that he fits in there because while he is X-Men related, he's not an X-Man per se. So, you know, I, I could have taken or left. I could take or leave Deadpool, I suppose. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, this one was interesting. One of the one of the first series of comic books I got in graphic novel was the Age of Apocalypse series. I had really no idea how it worked, but we were buying and selling toys of the from the Age of Apocalypse wave that came out from uh, Toy Biz in what was it like 2005 or six something like that, and. I was interested, and yeah, sadly I was. <laughs> I didn't really like it that much, I have to admit. But Apocalypse existed before this Age of Apocalypse. It was like, like a year-long setup of a series of X-Men stuff, right? Well, I think what happened was somebody went back in time and assassinated Charles Xavier. And so a new timeline arose where in, you know, Magneto's way of life sort of went, you know, where there, there was a great war between the, the mutants and the non-mutants, and Apocalypse rose, and he sort of ruled the planet Earth, and all of these characters that, if you were a comic fan, you had followed for years, had different backstories now, and some characters, for example, Cyclops was now evil. Some of these characters were, were bad. And then you have other characters like Magneto, who is, the, I believe, the leader of the X-Men in this Age of Apocalypse scenario, you know, where it's, where there are different alliances and, and Wolverine was called Weapon X still. I believe he was missing one of his hands and he just had a stump there. And, and I, I, you know, I never read any of it. I just, yeah, I, I was familiar with the toys and then People would talk about Age of Apocalypse, and I thought that it was a really clever idea that for one year of, of real time, Marvel just changed all of their X-Men comics to be in this alternate continuity. And if, you know, you you were lost, then that was too bad, but I, they just, you know, it's like, we're in it for all, the long haul, we're doing it for all, a year, and then I imagine at the end of that year, the timeline got reversed or, you know, fixed. Or we found out that that universe was a parallel universe that continues, and we went back to our universe, which they call the 616 universe. Uh, anyhow, sorry about that. Yeah, that was a little nerd side track, but it was my fault because I was kind of begging for it. But yeah, I read that. I got all four of the big fat compilation uh, trade paperbacks, and yeah, I didn't like it to tell you the truth. But you read all of them? I did. So that because that's so weird because I've read none of it and you've read all of it. Yeah, I read it all the way through and I didn't really enjoy it. But I've never really seen Apocalypse or I didn't know all that much about him, so I thought it would be interesting. This film. What? But surely reading that didn't help you for this film, right? I, was there anything in common? Uh, I mean, Apocalypse was in both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Weapon X. But see, when, that was in both. when Apocalypse was first created, it was in the early 80s. I would say like 86. He was created for this book called X Factor, where they brought back the original five X-Men. And he was creating his, his four horsemen of the Apocalypse, and he took Angel... And turned him into something similar, I mean, visually pretty instead of insanely ugly, called Archangel, and, you know, to be one of his four horsemen. And, okay. and, that, and that was similar. I mean, the, like the shape of the wings, they did the wings exactly the same the, as Archangels were in the comics. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, they, but Apocalypse turned Warren's skin blue in the comics. And I think there was already Too a surface of blue in this in this movie. There was one point where there were three blue characters in the same room together and I was like, wow, that's it's a lot of blue and well, the final uh, this is spoilery jumping ahead all the way to the end here, but you know, don't listen to the show if you haven't seen the movie or if you intend to see the movie anyway. At the very end, they've got their big team 
Mystique is the leader. Beast is right there at her side. And Nightcrawler is also there. Three blue folk. You would think that... Why is there so many blue X-Men anyways? What is the deal? There's not like pink ones and red and green ones. It's just all blue. What's up with that? Well, I don't know. I mean, it took a long time for that to happen. Because Nightcrawler was created in the 70s and he was black. And... Beast was originally gray, and then he later became blue, and, well, Mystique was always blue, but yeah. she never was this scaly monstrosity. We, who, in her defense, looked less reptilian in this movie than she has in all the others. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to comment on that, uh, there was oh, some yeah. point where you said... Hey, I leaned over and asked you about that in the show, because it didn't look like she was wearing the blue body paint. Like, Rebecca Romaine, when she was Mystique... It looked like that was just her body. It didn't look like she had a suit on or some kind of thing. It's like every morning she would have to come into work and like stand in some, I don't know, spray paint chamber where they like spray her down and then they stick all the little things onto her and all that kind of stuff. But it really looked like when she would run and stuff like that, it looked like her skin was what was you were seeing. But it didn't look that way for... Jennifer Lawrence it looked like that was not actually her body right I think that and yeah this is another subject that we won't talk about because we don't have time but she's a big star now and she didn't have the patience or the time to do the whole the what, full on body, body paint painting action. And so they made a uh, a suit for her uh, like a lycra Body suit, whatever you call it. What do you call it when you go surfing and you got this thing? That's what suit? Something like that for her. So you know, it would she'd just be able to slip into it and then out of it? And plus, she she was Je uh, Jennifer Lawrence through yeah, most of the movie. She almost never was, you know, looked like Mystique. I assume just the entire presence of Jennifer Lawrence in all of this is that. Oh my gosh! Now she's the big star of. The Hunger Games, we've got to use her. I mean, I doubt that had she not done so, she would have even been in part two. It wouldn't have been this big thing that uh, that, that she did. And then part three, now she's like some folk hero for all the mutants. Well, yeah, there was talk. I mean, X-Men First Class didn't do well. That they were just going to do something else. But that Fox said, we, well, we want to greenlight a sequel to that because Jennifer Lawrence is contractually obligated to come back. And she's a big star all of a sudden. But this was the last movie on her contract, and I think she had made it known she didn't want to do these anymore. Um, which I guess is fine, but it's just interesting. A couple of the reviews I read mentioned that you could tell she didn't want to do it anymore. And, and so I sort of watched for that while I was watching the movie, and... She was fine. She, uh, I can understand her saying, I don't want to do the six hours of makeup anymore or whatever. But uh, they could have tried just once to make Mystique look like she's supposed to look. Just just to try it and say, you know, here's like an in-between. Yeah. And it'll take us they, 20 minutes to paint your whole, you know, face and, and arms blue. And then you put on this wig and, you're, and you, this white dress. And, and, yeah. and yeah, it won't be long. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's it, it was interesting. I noticed at the very end her X Man suit. It was kind of designed to look sort of like her white dress. Yeah, all of those costumes at the very last shot, her last scene, were that like the Nightcrawler. It was yeah, just like again a very ugly version of what he's <laughs> supposed to be wearing. Jean had an ugly version of what she's supposed to be wearing. Uh, Cyclops. Looked a little bit like Cyclops, but, you know, you know where I'm going with this. Ugly. Um, <laughs> but one more thing, though. Okay, so the first movie came out in 2000. And it's fair to say, I'm going to agree with you for once, that the whole movie superhero resurgence started in that movie in 2000. And suddenly we started getting superhero movies pretty much every year. But now here we are 16 years later... And you don't just get one. Ooh, wow, we got one at the beginning of the summer and one at the end of the summer. But you get them all the time. I mean, just tons and tons of superhero movies. 
And there's been a big backlash in the last four or five years about that. I mean, people calling it superhero fatigue. And there's certain people that just, they hate all of these kinds of movies and think that there's too many of them and feel like they're all the same. And I got to admit, there was one point during the movie, and it was when everybody was fighting. You know, they were just sort of pairing off so they could have their little fights. And Psylocke had her pink energy sword and was making a pink lasso with it where I realized how these people must see these movies because it was just ridiculous and I was just like (gasps) it was like my eyes had been opened (laughs) and I realized oh my gosh guys this is this is why they don't like these things oh wow and and then look at Apocalypse he he does look goofy doesn't he and you can tell that they spent a fortune on that costume that he's wearing, but he's still a weird blue-gray guy with silver lipstick. I, I, I don't know. It was just this really surreal moment where I looked around and realized what I was a part of. Maybe the, uh, what do you call it, the the potion had worn off. And I looked around <laughs> and it's like, these girls don't love me at all. Oh, no, I'm in the Matrix right now. Anyhow, I wondered if there was a moment in the movie for you where you thought that too, where you're just like, oh, okay, guys, this is... Whoops. I didn't think that it was silly, but uh, some of the things that you said, like how some people say, oh, these are all the same. I was thinking that about this show. I was thinking, okay, the last movie we start off and Earth has been taken over and, and destroyed and it's this hell hole... And the mutants are trying to avoid the sentinels that are, you know, wiping everybody out. And there's no, it, as far as I could tell anyways, there's no regular people either. And the whole world is just shite, you know? And then we have this movie and, oh, the whole world is being destroyed by this guy and it, I don't know what they're doing next, but uh, I think we talked about this when we talked about Deadpool. Just the the idea of, you know, it doesn't always have to be bigger the next time around. Or maybe was it Captain America? What was it where they said, okay, you know, the next movie's going to have to be smaller than this last one was? Well, that yeah, Joss Whedon said that about age, the second Avengers movie, and you saw how that turned out. Yeah. Somebody said, nope, sorry, overruled. Which, it's too bad, because it's, it, I can see the fatigue with that, where it's just like, oh, the whole world is going to be destroyed again? You know, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting worried about this like I used to. I, I can't do it anymore guys i'm tired there was the the scene of wholesale destruction i say scene but that's an understatement like magneto is his powers have been amplified somehow and he's 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 lifting up all the minerals that are down at the bottom of the sea and 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 i guess he's they're building some kind of new paradise city in cairo but you yeah you see across the world just the level of destruction that's that's unparalleled he destroyed the one thing that hasn't been destroyed already in movies before the sydney Sydney opera Opera house House. i was Um, sad to see that one finally go but it just went on and on and and i sort of mentally checked out after a while yeah because it was just an extended special it was star trek the motion picture lovingly showing the enterprise (laughs) where you're like okay we see the enterprise okay guys no i i've seen that yeah, it's the Enterprise. Okay. <laughs> it, yeah, no, it's cool. It's a, it's a much better model than you used to. Okay, guys, stop it. Um, and that's how I felt, where it's just like, huh? because they also, they, they tried to avoid the, you know, showing millions of people perishing. I don't think we saw a single person not, die. Not one perish. There were all these people in Cairo, and cars were being p- picked up and run, but, but the people never got killed. And I felt like, okay, that's intentional, too. That's still backlash about Man of Steel. (laughs) But the thing about that backlash of Man of Steel is they don't not do it. You know what I mean? They still have to destroy buildings. You know, back in 1996, when Independence Day came out, and they first started blowing up buildings, you know, they blew up the White House, they blew up 
New York, they blew up LA, and all that kind of stuff that they did, everybody's like, oh my gosh, it was this thing that they'd never seen before, like, holy crap, they just blew up the White House, that's, whoa! But now they blew up the White House in every movie. And they have to stretch to find something that hasn't been right, like the Sydney Opera House. Like the Sydney Opera House, where it's just like, okay, we've done the the Eiffel Tower, we've done Mount Rushmore. It's like, okay, what are famous landmarks? Done the tall building in Dubai, and we've done the one in Indonesia. (laughs) Let's see, where's the? Is there a tall building? Is there one in 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 the U.S. anymore? But we saw like all these cars being sucked up off the bridge and the bridge was going to... But we never saw any people until the destruction had ended. And then you saw people walking around on that bridge. And again, yeah, I think that was a conscious decision. Well, we don't want to remind people that there are people dead. But imagine how many people would have died from that sequence. Because that puts Man of Steel to shame. <laughs> this was global. I mean, I would not be surprised if they said over a billion dead from that incident. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, one of the trailers that we saw before the movie started was for Independence Day 2 coming after all the destruction that happened in Independence Day 1 where the aliens came and they blew up, I don't know, they had like 20 ships or something like that, and they blew up all the biggest cities in the world. And then... You know, then they, they, the ship started moving to yeah, the second they biggest. They went to the know? next biggest, the closest next big city, and the next big city. And they blew up Houston. At one point, they tried to nuke the ship in Houston, and you know, didn't do anything. But then they blew up Houston, and then they just kept going and going. So, what in the hell is this world going to be like in Independence Day two? After that, you know, how can there be? Do I you mean, think they'll address that? I'm sure they have to do some addressing of that, but I don't think that they're going to sufficiently address it. Because, yeah, the world, the 2016 of Independence Day 2 would be totally different than yeah. the 2016 that we live in now. It would because be... the planet would have been brought to its knees in 1996. And a lot of the advancements and things that we've got right now would not exist Plus, in, there's a line in the movie that says, you know, we've used their technology for the past 20 years. So in some ways, their 2016 would be more advanced than ours. But Yeah, they said they used their technology, but how could they even use it? They don't have just a shitload of money laying around and a bunch of people who are going to be able to work. They blew up every major city in the world. It would, it would take us back at least 100 years if not a thousand years in our advancement, in our way of life, people would be freaking have to go back to farming to, to make a living. No, that's true. You think about the and destruction. 20 years is of, not a, enough time to, to fix all that. There were all kinds of wrecks and ruins and debris left over from World War II in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s. You know what I mean? Yeah, they um, kept finding unexploded bombs in, you and, know, downtown London and stuff. And yeah, World War II was a huge deal, but it wasn't an alien invasion incinerating hundreds of square miles blocks. Or yeah. maybe it was just this building. That and up. so... Uh, anyway, yeah, this sorry. This would be the same thing here, you know? He destroyed tons of places. And yeah, they're like, oh, and Magneto stopped Apocalypse on the news. It's like, yeah, but Magneto also kind of destroyed the world. So I don't know if he's going to get a pass for all that. That doesn't... Yeah, that's... <sighs> seem okay. It's like the end of X-Men 3, okay. where Jean Grey goes into San Francisco with Magneto, and Magneto rips out the Golden Gate Bridge and like flies it across the bay and lands it at Alcatraz or something like that. And uh, they have this big fight... And eventually Wolverine kills Jean Grey to save the world. Then right after that, they're like, oh, yes, and everybody accepts mutants now because of... Oh, that's right. Like, what the hell? Nobody would accept... They would be way more pissed off than ever. They just ripped the Golden Gate Bridge out of the freaking bay and pulled it over in like crap. And there was this huge... And now they're like, yeah, we're just going to let Beast be the ambassador for the United States to somewhere. 
because we like mutants now and it's fine to have some furry blue guy as the ambassador that it doesn't the the way they just forgive and move on with just the things that happen in some of these superhero movies is weird i'm interested to see and we i don't think that we talked much about this when we talked about civil war but i'm interested to see in the next movie you know what's going to be going on because captain america and all of his little team are basically outlaws and is that going to hold on is that going to be the the way it goes or is it just going to be like yeah hey, everybody loves captain america again because of the fact that he's captain america and stuff america f yeah. well i wonder about that because Sadly, we don't get any movies that can explore that. I mean, unless they're going to visit these characters in Black Panther, which I bet they won't. You don't think so? I, you, I don't think we'll see they're Steve or in, any of those guys in Black Panther. They're will. in uh, Wakanda hiding out, aren't they? Yeah, but... Isn't that what they, they were cost doing a at lot the of end? Money. <laughs> they cost a lot of money. Yeah, but all of these movies are just Avengers movies now. Every <laughs> single one. Captain America is... Yeah, and there is Age of... Agents of Shield, where maybe they can Age explore <laughs> a little bit of what the world is like and you know stuff. But they've sort of taken a step away from the movies as well and said, "Well, we're our own thing." But that's too bad. I hate it that they have to do that or feel that they have to do that because uh, you know they can explore a lot of stuff on a weekly show that you can't explore just visiting these characters every two or three years. Yeah, but yeah, I do remember two years ago me making this prediction that there would be a Fantastic Four meets the X-Men movie that Fox would do. And yeah, that, there's no sign of that. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Well, the Fantastic Four did so bad. Now, I was asking you about... Because the, the next X-Men movie that was on Fox's uh, docket was supposed to be uh, Gambit, right? But you said that that's been just... That's been removed from their schedule. It was supposed to be this year. Yeah, we were going to get Deadpool in February, and then X-Men in May, and then Gambit in, I want to say, August. But there was no way, because they hadn't even started it. That was that it was still going to be Taylor Kitsch or no, whatever? No, it was going to be Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum? Um, and I think that's still going to oh. happen. But... It's not gotten a release date. Do you think Channing Tatum can do a little Cajun? No, but I'm sure he can look real good doing he whatever do he it. wants to do. He could do it in his Magic Mike outfit. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's a bunch more X-Men movies on the way. I mean, the next one what's, that's yeah, actually going to happen is now? they're calling Wolverine 3. Okay. And that's going to be the R-rated Hugh Jackman Patrick Stewart movie, so Patrick that'll be interesting. Patrick Stewart. Is it going to be a continuation? Because our, our post-credit scene that we saw this time around was Agent Smith-looking guy walking into the... Weapon X facility. Weapon X facility and getting Wolverine's blood and put it in a briefcase and closing the briefcase, and it said, The Essex Corporation on his briefcase, which I assume that's a, you know, a, a corporation headquartered in Essex somewhere. <laughs> I think that's probably a good prediction. I, you know, I don't really know what that coda was about. Somebody told me that there's, there's going to be some kind of Mr. Sinister hint that maybe he's going to be the villain in an upcoming movie. It would have been a really good chance to introduce Gambit in that coda or in, you know, in a scene like when all the mutants are hearing Xavier's message or, you know, in Cerebro or something. But, yeah, I don't know about the Gambit thing. Because Deadpool was so wildly successful, there's no reason why Gambit couldn't be as well. Yeah. So the Wolverine 3, d did you know about uh, Hugh Jackman's appearance? Is that something that was spoiled for you? I didn't know. I mean, you thought that it was going to be somebody else. I just guessed. I didn't. Assu I don't know why. I should have assumed. I should have guessed that it would be Wolverine, but instead I thought, oh, maybe it's Sabretooth. 
I don't know. They were saying, it's, 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 there's a beast in here. And it sounded like, I don't, I was thinking, okay, this is a big, something big. Who's somebody that's really big? Uh, and I couldn't think of anybody that really fit the bill. And so I just thought, well, animal, saber tooth, maybe. But yeah, I was kind of surprised. to. to <laughs> I, it, I shouldn't have been because Hugh Jackman has done a uh, uh, an appearance in every one of these. I mean, shoot, he was basically the main guy in Days of Future Past. So I should have guessed that he'd be back for more. <laughs> but, uh... Um, I See, I, I thought that he was in it. I didn't know in what capacity. But, yeah, he hadn't been in any of the posters or, you know, any of the stuff that I had seen. So I was just like, oh, okay, maybe it's another cameo like he had in First Class. And it basically was. It was a much more extended cameo. But... Yeah, the audience didn't go nuts like they did when they saw him. Well, the, when they saw him in first class, it was, you know, it was a big funny, it was like the funniest moment probably of the whole movie, really. <laughs> Where they walk in to try and recruit him and he says, go f*** yourself. And they go, what? And they just turn around and walk <laughs> back out. So for a while I kept going, is that really him? Because he had the head set thing on and... His face was extra hairy. I couldn't tell for sure. Like, did they, it's, are they introducing a new Wolverine now? Because mm. you know they've been introducing new folks for everybody. Did you miss any? Like, now we've got a new Jean Grey. Did you miss Famke? How do you say her name? Is it Famke, Famke Jansen, Jansen or Jansen? I we say Jansen. I don't okay. know if it's actually Jansen, but I mean, she's not foreign. Uh -huh. You know, even if maybe her parentage is. Did you miss her? Did you miss Halle Berry as Storm? Did you miss? Did you miss Rebecca Romaine? I, dude, I I like all of the old versions better. Yeah, <laughs> and just but the, you love Jennifer Lawrence. Do you feel, I do love Jennifer do you, Lawrence. Do you feel disloyal thinking that you like the old one better? But it just she. <laughs> one thing I had a friend. I have this friend at work who was talking about. The, the difference between uh, Jennifer Lawrence and Rebecca Romaine. And he said that he thought Rebecca Romaine really had a much more believable physicality to the part. Like when she would do the crazy stunts that she would do, you know, the flipping and the jumping and all that kind of stuff, you seemed to buy it more than you do with Jennifer Lawrence doing the stuff. I don't know if... Well, yeah. Which sure. seems really weird, because it's not like Rebecca Romaine is a athlete or a martial artist or anything. She's just a friggin' model. So, I don't know, maybe they just had a stunt person doing all their stunts, and so that's why it looked better. Very probably, yeah. But she was also very tall and svelte, and, mm -hmm. you know, she's got the legs that go all the way up. They do? And, and maybe that... Uh, yeah, you get to that see that in to... hers because it's just body paint. <laughs> um, well, they introduced the new Cyclops. And the funny thing is there was a scene in the script for the original X-Men where that happens, where, where Scott goes into the bathroom and his eye powers come on and all that stuff. And they had to cut it because, if you recall, Fox cut six months from their schedule... And so they had to lose the character of Beast, lose the character of Blob, and then uh, some of these sequences that were supposed to introduce the characters were cut. Yeah, I thought they'd had a scene. Uh, I, when we saw Storm at the start, I was thinking, oh, this is like the cut scene from the earlier one, too, but it, I don't think it was. I, uh, there was supposed, I thought there was like a scene where Storm was still a little girl and her hair went white and everybody was making fun of her or something like I don't remember what the deal was with it but well yeah there was a deleted scene in X-Men Origins Wolverine with a little girl that turned out to be Storm but yeah originally the uh, first X-Men was going to show these characters getting recruited and then they cut all of that stuff but then they were going to shoot those scenes and put them in like a special edition that they were calling X-Men 1.5. That's the disc that I bought. Yeah, but fuck it. So, that yeah, they went to town and built a, uh, the, the set of the <laughs> bathroom or whatever. And it was, you know, right before they were going to shoot X-Men 2 and Fox pulled the plug on that. And so they ended up using that bathroom scene where Scott's powers were supposed to turn on in the scene where... 
uh, Mystique makes out with that dude in the toilet stall and, oh, yeah. and then injects him the, with the metal, stuff. metal serum. Uh, anyhow, sorry that, but it just I thought that that was interesting that that scene was supposed to be 16 years ago and now we're seeing it. The and, one time that Rebecca Romaine got to play herself, yeah. whereas Jennifer Lawrence just played herself the entire friggin' time. She's like, "F that! I'm not doing the makeup. Screw you guys." Well, I remember there was that scene in like the military base or whatever in the second one or days of future past mm-hmm. where she was jennifer lawrence and it was just it was like wait why why is she jennifer lawrence in this and yeah the whole movie was pretty much that this time which is okay i mean they gave an explanation that she was a fugitive and, and that she was the well X-Men see that her and stuff. as and you so, would be i mean because nobody just... else looks like her right except for nightcrawler and, <laughs> but and beast <laughs> okay and apocalypse a little bit but you know the blue crew <laughs> she could join the blue man group It'd be totally nobody would see her nobody would know she'd just have to shave the, her head well yeah I, I guess i would like to know what you thought of the movie um because uh, yeah I, I i really missed some of these old actors even patrick stewart and ian mckellen i missed them I really felt like Michael Fassbender owned the role of Magneto in these last couple movies. He, just, they were, he brought something to it where it's just like, wow, that I'm seeing it from a new angle, a new point of view uh, that I, I responded to. And I never really felt that way with McAvoy's Xavier. But I, I felt like it was sort of lacking in this one. It just, you know, a lot of, of tears <laughs> slowly, you know, majestically rolling down his face, and I was like, oh. You know, I... There was a lot of things about this that were disappointing. Uh, I mean, like, we've got the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Do they ever refer to them as that? I... Uh, they mentioned it in the whole he gets four acolytes. Oh, oh okay, right. The, stolen from the Bible, or the Bible stole it from him. Um <laughs> The, these four horsemen that he goes and he gathers, they all are just kind of just standing around. There was a lot oh, of... Oh, sh- dude, there was so much standing around. So many times when people... And it made me, as a storyteller, think about if I ever have a scene like this. You know, the Return of the Jedi scene where the Emperor is given his f- speech and then he zaps Luke and then he speeches and then he zaps Luke again and Vader is just standing there and... I, I'm sure there were different versions of Return of the Jedi where Vader stood there a shorter time and stood there a longer time, or the awful new version where Vader says, no. But, yeah, they timed that just right, so you never go, come on! But there were times when people were just standing around, I'd be like, why are you just standing there? You yeah. guys have powers. Moira doesn't have powers, but the rest of you can do something. And they, there was just more and more and more standing there. And then Storm, like, shoots lightning or whatever. But it was about three minutes after she should have done it. I was just like, why Why do they keep yeah. showing Storm watching this? Or, you know what I mean? It, it was weird. Uh, and then was maybe John of... Ottman had to go do the score during the scenes where that should have been edited down a little bit. But it's just like every time they, sh- they had to show where everybody was. But most of them were doing nothing. They were watching the fight or whatever. And I thought, why? What? They're... Because they didn't establish that these people were terrified and they had to hide or whatever. And that's why they would just stand there. Yeah, Beast was like the last person who would be able to take on all of these guys. And he was right there in the middle of it. Yeah, anyway, sorry. You continue. I spoke well, over I was going to talk about earlier on. I mean, the the four horsemen were like set dressing most of the time. Apocalypse would stand there and talk, and they would just stand there in the background, looking like, "Wow, yeah, that does look like Psylocke. Cool." And then, yeah, they they do another scene where they're just standing. Then they're at the top of some mountain, just laying around on the rocks. <laughs> that was a long scene too. And I- they all just stand there and watch, and stand there and watch, and stand there and watch. And then they finally do something at the end where they at least you know had some fighting going on but mostly they just stood there and watched you know the the worst scene i would say is the one where xavier contacts magneto while he's there with the rest of the folks right 
and Apocalypse is drawing on Archangel's face with his super drawing powers. And all his the rest of them, finger. yeah, all the rest of them are just kind of standing there and watching. They're like, wow, this is, and they're in like a dark, empty room. And they're just standing there watching as he draws on his face. And it's just like, don't they have anything to do? Shouldn't they be doing something? I mean, give them some business at least. You know, I mean, that's one of those things that you do as an actor when you don't want to just be standing there. You, you give yourself something, like you set the table or whatever the crap you have for your show. And they, these guys have never had business. They were always just standing there. And I felt bad. Like a lot of these people, it should have been something. But instead they were just standing there the whole time. Now Psylocke, I don't know Psylocke very well because I think she's like a 90s creation. Wasn't she supposed to be a good guy in, the, in, in general? Yeah, she's always been a good guy. She's Captain Britain's sister. She was a, an X-Man when I was first reading the book. The first issue I ever bought she was in. And then, yes, she became Asian... Um, it was the 80s still, but, uh, you know, she came into her own in the 90s when everything exploded and was so big and powerful and lots and lots of boobs. Wait, what? Did you something about boobs? Nothing. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I, I've i never particularly cared one way or another for Psylocke. And so if I were a big fan, I think I'd probably feel betrayed about that. But I don't know. And, yeah, there was another scene where she just kind of stands up and she's she's looking around, and then finally she walks away. And I was just like, "Why? Why did? What? What was that?" She was the one person who stayed evil, I guess. Which was I thought weird, since she was supposed to be good, but uh, she was the one that wasn't. Um, she looked good, but yeah, there uh, there yeah, was nothing they special had some other or interesting stuff. about her. Uh, like Jubilee too. You get Jubilee appearing all over the place in this movie. Although I don't think she has one line. She raised her hand at one point. Yeah, she was going to answer the question right before they were rudely interrupted and had to end the class. She was all over the place. And you're like, oh, wow, Jubilee. They got Jubilee in this movie. And then she's nothing. <laughs> she's just a kid in a yellow jacket. And that's all she is. And essentially, that's what Kitty Pride was in like the first two X-Men movies, right? She was just an extra. Yeah, just an extra that disappeared through the bed or whatever. But she at least disappeared through the bed, oh, and they mentioned, point, "Oh, I know yeah. a little girl who can walk through walls and all that kind of stuff." That they mention her and stuff like that, so you get at least something. The only reason we knew it was Jubilee is because we know what Jubilee looks like. Otherwise, she could have just been some kid in a yellow jacket. Good point. Yeah, she didn't ever use her powers in any way. In fact, I don't know that the students ever used. None their of them powers. did. Yeah, except for the ones that were actual. X Men characters, main it was it wasn't like you know that kid, the kids playing basketball in the first movie where it's like, hey, no powers and all that stuff. Yeah, right? or the second movie where they come in to try and take, you know, the people in the school and like, there's the girl that Colossus. Screams. Colossus stands up and he turns metal. And he's like, I can help you, and Wolverine's like, help them, you know. They all and the, yeah, Kitty Pride drops through the bed and and yeah, the girl screams and you know all the different stuff that they did with these extras whereas in this case they were just extras they were just there to be saved by <laughs> by quicksilver Quick although silver. they don't call him quicksilver what do they call him anything in this movie no did, what was the deal with wh him not telling magneto that he's his son why was he so hesitant to do it I don't know. It just seems like that would have been more motivation for Magneto to leave the dark side. Yeah. If he knew he had... If he realized, oh, I have a son that's still alive and I can save him. Yeah, well, I mean, there's that speech. And it's not much of a speech. It's probably three sentences that Mystique gives to Eric when Eric is doing his thing. And I... Did, did the script just need another draft? Is that what it was? I I think what... Oh, I don't know. What it needed was less, it seems oh, to me. Oh, okay, good point. Yeah, I mean, It needed less It had stuff. sequelitis, didn't it? It had X-Men 3 syndrome or Spider-Man 3 syndrome. In yeah, this. it had so... You know, like we were complaining. Like, okay, we've got the Four Horsemen, but they're set dressing for most of the time. They uh, are just background people. They don't do anything... They don't, you know, they're just there. 
the stuff just keeps going on and on as he goes, oh, we're going to go to this place, I'm going to get this guy, I'm going to go to this place and get this guy. We got to see each of the four horsemen. We got to see the, you know, the stuff from X-Men where they go and gather all the X-Men, except for in reverse where he gathers all the bad guys. When, so, considering that they did so little, why did we have to get all that stuff? I mean, couldn't we have just had him show up in a shot and there's Storm and he brings her and then he shows up and there's Angel and he changes him and then he shows up and, you know, just you could do that in like three minutes. You could. And then he shows up and you have one actual scene where he gets Magneto instead. I guess. I, I liked the recruiting scenes at the beginning because I thought it was going somewhere. Because <laughs> they, they build, like, the Storm character up. Like, she's going to be a major player in the rest of this movie. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh. she has a lot to do at the beginning of the movie. And we first meet Angel in the same scene where we meet Nightcrawler. I mean, you're like, oh, okay, Angel's going to have a lot to do, too. Um, but, yeah, you're right. They just they go away. and They yeah. just didn't do anything. And, and they got all these X-Men that... That was one thing I thought was interesting at the end when they have their team. They're like, all right, you guys are the X-Men. And just like a Quicksilver and Mystique. And I don't know who else was there. It was a lot of people. It was just like, this is the X-Men team? Couldn't they get a team that was like ever once a team? <laughs> like, do they just... But they don't care about that anymore. I no, mean, they don't if care about anything. Did. That was one of the things that somebody, uh, same guy was complaining about Mystique's lack of physicality in this new uh, series was just saying that, you know, one thing, I mean, these X-Men movies are cool, but from movie to movie, they don't give a shit about continuity. They're just like, yeah, we'll just do this and we'll just do that. You know, you have Wolverine and it's still Hugh Jackman, but we already had all these characters here as like young people in at this time and, and now here we are in the 60s and they're they're old you know we've had emma frost in both origins wolverine and first, first class, class. I, I suppose they're probably trying somewhat to keep the continuity are they in just the first class oh okay you know but not when you go off to the other un- the rest of the universe, it's just like, nah, we don't care about them. This is separate. I mean, it's the same guy, <laughs> but it's separate. Well, the, I felt that way a little bit with Moira McTaggart, where she's like, oh, hey, she's in this. That's interesting. Because she, she, yeah, there was no sign of her in the last movie. And I guess she's not really a love interest for Xavier in this movie either. But it was interesting that there were all these powered characters and then her. Yes, that's cool. At one point, she was sort of co-piloting that awful-looking vehicle, <laughs> whatever that thing was. And I, I think it was an X-wing fighter. It, it was one of those things where it's like, well, we need to give her something to do. It's like, okay, how about if she's also flying the vehicle? And I'm like, okay, that's great. But I, yeah, I felt a little bit bad for her. she uh, has the flashback to what she did in the first movie at the end of the movie, and I thought that, that was neat. But. Uh, just like the four horsemen, they probably should have done more with her or, or removed her, her altogether. Yeah. Yeah. And same thing with Mystique. She had a lot to do, but again, she either didn't have enough to do or she had too much to do in this movie. Yeah. Mystique is missed, completely misused in this new series. They brought her in, and they're like, oh my gosh, well, Jennifer Lawrence, she's famous, so we got to use her again. But she's like a spy, you know what I mean? She's someone who can disguise herself as other people and throw her into the middle of a battle scene when the whole city is being torn apart and et cetera, et cetera. She's worthless. She might as well be Moira McTaggart. All she can do is look different, which they did at least get her to do once or twice. One thing where she tries to cut uh, Apocalypse's, Apocalypse's yeah. throat, but because she disguised herself as Psylocke, but that was totally useless. You know, seems like it could have been better. I wonder if there was another version of this script where Wolverine was a major player. Because, yeah, I didn't miss Wolverine. I didn't feel like, oh, shoot, he should be in these scenes. And all that, but there were still too many, and and that's got to be hard when you've got this many characters 
that you can play with because Scott and Jean had a lot to do in the movie, but in the same way as Mystique, maybe they should have had more to do or maybe, you know, they're just bit players also. Yeah, the whole Jean can wipe out Apocalypse with her Phoenix powers, I guess it just seemed too soon and there's no consequences to that at all. Maybe we needed a scene where she's just like, oh shoot, now I've unlocked this thing and I can't lock it up again. And it's like, oh shoot. But there was nothing. She never got another line. Did she get more scenes with her sweet 80s shoulder pad jacket? I don't know. What did you think of, of uh, Sophie Turner, right? She's the girl in Game of Thrones. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't help but just hate her every moment she was on the screen. <laughs> I just missed fam key. Although I really liked the girl that was Storm. Do you like the way she acted or the way she looked? Uh, I liked the way she looked and she seemed cool. Did she join the X-Men at the end? She did, she yeah. Did. She came and joined the X-Men uh. because she turned against him and became a, a helper. Because she saw the mystique was on their side and so... Oh, that's why. Okay. She I, wanted to be I with the hero. I should have known that. Yeah, noticed that. But Just, yeah, she. I thought she was good, but she didn't have much to do either. So you couldn't really. That you know, we we've talked about like the Avengers, for example, the first Avengers movie. They had all these characters, and they needed to have something for them all to do, and they did such a good job at giving them all something to do. Uh, this one, they had even more, like way more, and this time around they didn't. I, th I don't think have do such a great job of giving them something to do. And whatever happened to Havoc? I guess he died? But it was weird because they just gave him up for dead so quickly. It was just like, yeah, he was closer to the blast. But Yeah, I mean, they were going to go look for him again. And Havoc and then... wasn't in the last movie either. They brought him back for this one to be Scott's Killed. big brother, which, I mean, it works fine. You know, there are some X-Men that are insanely powerful, like Storm or like Jean. And then there are X-Men like Hank or... Yeah, sorry, just the Beast is the one that comes to mind the most. Just because he did a lot of action stuff and I was like, yeah. And I, I guess Nightcrawler did a lot of action stuff too. And, and bo those two are, are really low on the power scale, you know what I mean? Like, Beast's major power is that he's smart and can build things. He's agile, and he has big feet. Not in this. That's what he's supposed to be as a super... I mean, he should be somebody who's fighting. He's supposed to be a super good fighter. But he's somebody that should be fighting low-powered people. Because he's just a fighter. He just can punch and kick and scratch and bite. He can't blast somebody with a superpower beam or... Uh, Whatever. I mean, the the ability to bamf, I think, makes Nightcrawler, he, you know, he should be able to do a lot. I mean, he, sh he should be able to appear behind people that can't fly, take them up in the sky, and then disappear and drop them, you know, and all the, these kind of things that he should be able to do. Oh, and, and the most godlike of the characters was Quicksilver. And I understand that that was the scene that everybody loved in Days of Future Past. I liked it too. But the stuff he did, I'm mean, like, how, how did he fly? I just, at one point he picks up Mystique and then there, he has her in the air. And I was just like, how? How did he do that? I don't understand. I, I guess he's so fast that, you know, even an explosion is going in reverse. In, Slow motion. Yeah, the way I they portray it it's not like he's really fast it's more like he slows time and can just walk around and like do stuff instead of he's really fast i don't know you you paint yourself into a corner when you establish how powerful these people are because uh yeah something like that there's no defense against somebody that's that fast that he, because he he alters space and time too, right? right? It's like at the end when Magneto and Jean are building the mansion, and it's just like, what? What? How? How would you do that? Really? You just Magneto was making the nails go in while Jean put the boards in place. 
But and... that boggles the mind <laughs> of how you that could actually. I mean, Do the you... amount of detail and concentration and stuff. Again, we're talking about the power of creation. What a god can do. Yeah. Like, oh, but but maybe Apocalypse opened up all these mutants' abilities so that they're way stronger than yeah, they were before. Jean released the Phoenix, so she should be pretty powerful. And Magneto can freaking change the whole magnetic field of the whole Earth or something. Yeah, the one thing that somebody mentioned in a review that I saw, they were talking about Magneto, and they're just like, Magneto's a bad guy in this movie again. In case you missed it, and in all of the other movies, he's a bad guy with a heart of gold. So he's going to start out being a bad guy, but eventually he's going to be swayed again. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm i interested to see how this goes. I, I think we did talk about this the last time we were talking. Just, you know, we have... X-Men team movies and then we have now a bunch of separate character movies coming from Fox like Deadpool and like Wolverine. We talked about the uh you know the overstuffedness, the the, the huge world cha- ending crises that hap- that are happening in these big team movies and then you have just the little Deadpool wants Francis to give him his face back so he can go and kiss his girlfriend again kind of stories you know much smaller scale stories and maybe that's the way they can go i mean that's something that should be able to work you know you've got solo character movies and in those well here it's not such a big gigantic story but when you get everybody together it is well, were there any characters in this movie that you would like to see a solo movie of? I mean, because we, we talked about how much potential there is for a Black Widow solo movie from Marvel Studios. But if, you know, they went to Jennifer Lawrence and said, oh, hey, we, we you're a big star. We'll give you your own Mystique movie. Would anybody want to go to that? Would you want to go to see that? I wouldn't want to see Mystique. Mystique is not a character that I really, that resonates with me. Yeah, solo movie, I don't know. I'd be interested to see, you know, an old team, you know, Gene and Cyclops and, I don't know, (laughs) maybe I just want to see the first three movies again. (laughs) I want to see uh, that team come back together, Wolverine. But yeah, I I don't know if there's anybody that I would be like, yeah, I gotta see a solo Storm movie. Do any of those characters have a solo comic book? Oh, I'm sure they've all had solo comic books. Solo Jean Grey. X-Men was such a big deal. I mean, it's hard. It's like talking. It's like my dad telling me how beautiful Elizabeth Taylor was when I was a little boy. And I'd be like, what? (laughs) I couldn't even get my head around it. And that's how it is with X-Men now. It's like, no, guys, there was a time when it was the biggest of the big deals. And yeah, I mean, any X character would get their own book or mini series, and give a chance to spotlight Nightcrawler and see his that he was so fun loving and swashbuckling and romantic a character before the '90s came, and they decided, oh, he's going to be a religious fanatic. You know, all of these characters had their own little stories and side side adventures, and it's a shame that uh, yeah, there's nobody that I care enough about in this movie that I would want to rush out I mean, okay you see weapon x for five minutes and yeah i want to see more with him but <laughs> he does nothing in this movie that made me care more i mean this is probably the most violence we've seen from wolverine in any of these fox x-men movies and maybe that's just a hint of what's coming yeah in the next one but but again that do, that's not what makes a good movie guys that's not what made Deadpool a good movie. And so, I mean, hopefully somebody else has something they want to say about Wolverine and about his world and his mind and all that stuff. I I don't know. I, I can't imagine that this movie, that Apocalypse and Wolverine 3, will have anything in common, right? Because there's many years difference. Is there? They're not going back? Do you know? 
I don't know, but because Patrick Stewart is in it, we're assuming, and also because Patrick Stewart is getting up there in age, and they're yeah. not going to make him up to be younger, it's that it takes place now, day. yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Yeah, the movie didn't do as well as Days of Future Past, and uh, I imagine that part of that is there's just superhero fatigue in a world where we've had Deadpool and... Batman v Superman and Civil War in the same year already. But I, there's no way Fox is not going to make another one. I just would be neat if they could say, hey, you know, we can't afford to spend another 200-something million on this next one. Could could you bring one in for half that and let them try to do a more intimate story with fewer characters? And Yeah, I mean, they, they, it's one thing that they could have at least learned from Deadpool. Cost them, what, $50 million to make it? So maybe they can possibly uh, learn that lesson and lower the budget down because, uh, you yeah, know, the supersized movies does seem to be getting a little bit old. Well, folks, thank you for coming with us on this journey. And there are movies this summer that are coming out, way more movies this summer than last summer, if you can believe it. Uh, and so if there's something you're super excited about hearing us talk about let us know uh, otherwise i don't know that yeah what would be next dr strange well that's not till november so. oh is it all the way to november i assumed it was august may still be the next one <laughs> is there anything no. else you want to see no you and i will we'll find stuff I, I think we're obligated to go see finding dory are we obligated and see that will be interesting oh. because that's me dragging you and you have been dragging me for the last few yeah, but I really yeah, I feel like we that. have to see Finding Door. I mean, we've seen all the others, and then this is a sequel to a movie that's beloved by both of us. Maybe you're terrified to see it, but yeah. I look forward to see to hearing what you think. You know, after having such low expectations. Yeah, maybe I'll love it because I expect it to be awful. Can't be as bad as I imagine it to be. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening to this. Hopefully you got something out of it. And hopefully we had something to say that you thought was interesting. But probably not, is my guess. Anyways, <laughs> we'll see you next time, <laughs> folks. I'm Big Anglovich. I'm Rush Outfield. And uh, X on Wayne. Yeah. Sorry, what do they say in the X-Men? X-Men Assemble. <laughs> That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is. I was trying to find a word for coming of age, and I was like, growing pains of a sidekick. <laughs> and then I thought, ooh, one, the wonder years of a sidekick. Well, we're stealing. <laughs> Charles in TV charge of a, of a sidekick. sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> wonder of a sidekick. <laughs> Small wonder. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is not. Uh, it doesn't bother me. I don't think it's going to hurt the sound. Blocking the mic. I know, but is it really going to hurt the sound? I don't know, but I figured I'd take it off, but it turned out to be much harder than I thought it would be. That's what she said. Well, okay, I hear you, and, and I mean, there was somebody that said, hey, you need to see Jungle Book, and I regret that I didn't see it. I think it's probably too late to see it now. Although, we could do an episode where we talk about Maleficent and Alice in Wonderland and... This live-action Cinderella and live-action Jungle Book and live-action Beauty and the Beast and cr the Cruella de Vil movie with Emma Stone. <laughs> we could talk about... Oh, plus Maleficent 2. <laughs> oh, maybe a Maleficent 2? Uh, yeah, that's one of those where it's just like Snow White and the Huntsman 2. Nobody asked for that sequel. Nobody's going to go to that sequel. Anyway, but yeah, hey, that maybe that's an episode we should do. And I will have seen... Jungle Book by that time, so I can talk about that. But, um, sorry, I'll put a pin in that discussion. Wouldn't yeah. you enjoy talking about that, of the live-action Disney remakes? Uh, I, I suppose so. I mean, it'll be like our Ghostbusters episode, because I've seen Maleficent. That's it. That's it of all of those. Street Sweepers here, should we no, no, it's drive okay. away? 
Oh, you want us to drive away? Should we go park what? in the coals? We'll just leave it rolling and I'll just drive over there real fast. That would be fun, right guys? Come on a journey with us. We're in the Target parking lot and now we're going to go to Coles. Anyhow, uh, pin in that discussion, I, I, I think it would be fun to talk about at least the Beauty and the Beast remake because there was a trailer for that and I wouldn't even watch the trailer. And so we could watch the trailer and then talk about it or if, you know, enough time passes that we could see the Jungle Book remake, we could see that and then talk about Oh, you f***ing f***ed it. F yeah! Eat shit! Okay, sorry guys. Can only do so much profanity on the episode before I have to put explicit on the, or sorry, you would have to do that explicit. It's okay, I put it on anyways. Have, do you ever listen to episodes of That Gets My Goat? Uh, not usually. Yeah, I didn't think you did. Sometimes I will bleep the profanity, and sometimes I will leave in the profanity, and I've never heard a comment from you as to which you prefer, you know, where you're just like, oh, I wish you hadn't bleeped it that time, or it's like, oh, that was funnier when you did bleep it, or, you know, whatever. I, anyhow. Yeah, I don't want, I mean, that gets my goat comes out with enough regularity that I don't want to make it sit until I listen to it <laughs> like I do with the regular episodes although this last episode I didn't listen to and then because I had taken too long to get it out as well doodly doot doodly doot back to the back to the beat y'all yo I think I may have even I think Starship Sofa ooh you I don't think you could hear that could you?